On today's episode, we are going to take a look at two growth companies. The first one is Neo Technologies, and Neo is a business that's inside the e scooter world. It's pretty big in China and in Europe, so we're going to take a look at them. And then after that, we're going to take a look at Yest. And Yest is a, a business that allows other companies to make sure their online information and their online answers are as accurate as possible. So let's get started. Yo. So like I mentioned today, two growth companies, Neo Ticker NIU, which is right now headquarters in China. And we're going to see this is the, the e-scooter company. Like I said, both of these are growth stocks. And we're going to see by their market cap, they are pretty low. Right now, the market cap for NIU, remember, ticker NIU for all the podcast listeners, the market cap is $1.36 billion. The second one is YEST, and this YEST, and this is Y-E-X-T. And this one is an American company, and right now with the market cap of $2.04 billion. So if you guys have been watching my channel, you guys know when I'm looking at a growth stock, I want two things. The first thing I want is to have strong growth in the future and to have strong historical um, growth as well in revenue section. The second thing is most of the times growth companies are not making money at the moment. So I want them to I want them to have a very, very strong balance sheet. And let me just say both of these businesses meet those standards. And that's why I decided to show them to you. Neo was one that was given to us by actually one of our members in the Discord channel. If you guys want to join our Discord channel, I have a, which is free for anybody that I'm not charging here. I'm not a professional, so I'm not. All of this is my opinion and should not be taken as advice. But we have a great set of growth investors in the in the Discord channel, and Neo was one that was actually talked about. I think probably two three weeks ago by Bill Bren. Um, he has been rec- he has been showing a lot of stocks to the group and and I really enjoyed a lot of them C E L H was one he also brought up to the group and I did a video on them and a lot of us decided to purchase in on that one the second one yes this is one that I've have actually had for some time and the guys in the discord channel actually gave me nonsense because I have yet to do a video on this one so let's 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 continue so the first thing i want to do is take a look at price performance for first we're going to start off the episode with taking a look at neo then we're going to take a look at yes so the first thing i want to do is take a look at price performance neo right now is sitting at about 18 dollars, and today was up about 12 percent way better than the market i want to take a look at how it, it has done since february 20th which is when the market really started tanking and right now it's up about 83 percent and you might be like oh say this is crazy why are you showing a, a, a company that's up 83 percent i mean right now the market cap for this company is still 1.36 billion so there is plenty of growth for it to go we have seen clouding companies go double digits already so it one thing i want to say is this obviously like i said this is not advice but just because a company has run up so much does not mean there's no more room for it to grow. The all-time highs need to keep breaking for the market to continue to keep going up. Um, so normally I do not get scared about buying businesses like this if I like uh, businesses that have seen such an over over jump in valuation. Especially if I if I believe in the company and I believe of what they're doing, right? To me, the price will continue to grow. There might be some sloppiness throughout. For me, if you guys don't know, right? I'm a long term investment, so throughout the process, there might be choppiness. There might go down. It might go down a lot. But to me, that's okay because I understand the business. And for me, I'm here for the long term game. And if I see value in the long term of things, I will enter the position. Um, so like I said, in the past six months, and since February 20th, this has returned about 80%. Alone, just today alone was up 11.70, about 12%. So now let's take a look at what NEO does. So the best place for, for a company, for anyone to ever find what that business does is to just go to their website. And we can see NEO right now is pretty much an e-scooter company. And maybe here in the United States, e- um, scooters are not the most popular things. But we know, for example, in China and Europe, where 
there might be a, a huge cities with huge population and very small very small roadways or just the it's it's cheaper to have a scooter than the car you see a, a bigger population of e-scooters so we're going to see this business is mainly focused in china and in europe um, and that's one thing I do like, and we're going to take a look at the revenue breakdown of Nuyu to see where that, where the scooters are being sold and how else this business makes money. All right. If we go to their website, we can see the types of, of products they have. They have different, they have different models, but they're all in the scooter platforms. They have the NQI GT in all different colors. They have... For example, you can go. The other thing I wanted to take a look at is their stores and to see where they actually had, um, where they actually were selling. And we can see right, right here, they have a huge amount of, of different stores in Europe, all the way from um, Ireland, United Kingdom, Spain, Sweden, Norway. Um, so all part of Europe they have. And they also have, it does seem like they are building it does seem like they have stores in China, Vietnam, Tha Thailand, and also where else? Malaysia. They have some in South Korea as well. So, so they are very populated in the eastern side of the world. They do actually have some stores here in the United States, it seems. Um, some dealerships here in the United States, in Mexico. But we can see the huge concentration for them is definitely in Europe. All right, so now that we understand what they do and we understand their product, Let's try to see, uh, let's try to learn more about the financial history of, of this business. And then what we want to do is we're going to take a look at their most recent earnings and take a look at just some some news that, that Neil might have. But before we go any further, guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the thumbs up and the bell. It helps the small channel out so much. And I truly, truly appreciate all the support. Also, if you guys want to get in contact with me, the comments is the best section, but I'm also very active on Twitter and on my Discord channel, which I mentioned earlier. All the information should be in the pinned comments, so make sure to follow me on Twitter. I have also just started uh, started being active on my website, josenaharo.com. There might be some days where I might not post a video just due to life circumstances, but I will be writing write-ups on, on my portfolio holdings. So you can pretty much say it's like a blog. If you guys are interested in more of a written format, check out josenaharo.com. I'm also doing a weekly newsletter. Um, so there you can sign up for the weekly newsletter where I talk about my, my recent videos of the past seven days, companies I'm willing to buy, companies if I had the money, I would enter my, my portfolio at the moment. So make sure to check out the website and make sure to sign up for that newsletter. All right, so first I want to take a look at the expected growth that that Neil might have. And first we can see we're going to take a look at forecasted annual revenue growth and forecasted annual earnings growth. And the way these growths are calculated are based are based via what um what analysts have expected for the next 5 years. So it gives me it, it breaks down that 5 years in an average and the average annual revenue. So for example, the forecasted revenue growth is 36.6% for NEO on an annual basis for the next three to five years, where the industry is 17.9% and the market is 9.3. So revenue for NEO is, is growing at a, almost double the, double, double the pace of the overall industry for the next three to five years and way above the market growth. Now, if we take a look at earnings growth for the next three to five years, Neil is expected to grow about 61% annually compared to 53% in the industry and 22.7% in the market. So this is something I, I, I obviously love to see that both revenue growth and earnings growth are expected to beat both the industry and the market. Next, let's take a look at who owns Neo at the moment. So remember, Neo is kind of similar to that other Chinese ticker, Neo. But remember, I'm saying NIU. This is not NIO. That is a whole electric um, company car, and, and that's not the company I'm taking a look at. So I hope the listeners do, or and the viewers don't get confused between the two. Maybe because my accent, it, it, it might be a little difficult to to distinguish the both. But this one is Ni U, the other one's Ni O. Remember, ticker for this one is N I U. But now ownership breakdown. One thing I do like to see is individual insiders still own over forty three percent of this total uh, of the of the business, and that's insane, right? When you have that many insiders still own a huge portion 
of the company it, to me is a huge bullish flag 20 percent is institutions so right now maybe institutions are not having their eyes on it which might be a a, a great thing for investors if I, I right now i do not have a position in neo and i honestly just use my cash to buy in, to buy in facebook and and google um to add into my position I, I know i posted a video about five days ago probably this past weekend um and i did pick up monday so that's where i use my money and i get money on a weekly basis if i didn't new if i had mon if i had funds new is definitely a business i would answer no problem Another thing we can see is one of the top 10 holders is actually the CEO and the chairman uh, of this business. He owns 4.4%. And we can see here maybe actually that is the only insider owning a very big portion. But that's still very big, right? When a big, when a big member like that owns a huge portion of the business. And to be frankly here, this guy might also be an insider. Yin and Lee, he owns about 40% of the company unfortunately there's no information if this is the ceo if this if this guy is the founder or anything but it does seem like this individual is holding at least 40 percent of the business so we're seeing straight strength in in expected future growth and we're seeing straight st we're seeing strong strength in individual ownerships which to me are, are both very very um huge flags huge bullish flags at that next i just want to take a look at historical revenue growth and here i'm using in a website called, called as lazyfa.com and revenue growth for neo is in the past in 2019 was 39 percent year to year in 2018 was 83.9 percent year over year and in 2017 was 127.62 so we can see this is at, even in even it even though it's forecasted to grow at very fast levels in revenue growth of close to 36 percent in in just the past historical has been growing at even faster rates one thing i do want to mention though is neo is um it's in the automobile industry right and due to the whole COVID 19 this most recent quarter was is, is going to be very weak and right with the whole COVID 19 especially in europe and china um not many people are out there buying cars or scooters during that time so they did see a decrease in that so this is one of the things i want if you are investing in neo i, I just want to dig the um drill into your mind is Remember, things like COVID-19 have happened and that affects automobile sales the most because no one's out there really buying cars. They want to make sure they have plenty of cash in hand and cash to be ready to grow. Um, so uh, if things continue, it might give some short term pullback on new. But at the same time, with short term price movements, one can never be sure how, how things go. So like I said, this can continue to ride its way up. So now um, I'm taking a look at their earnings presentation and here we're going to take a look at a few a few things they have for example they are in 40 countries um, and just they they were founded about six yeah six seven years ago um, and they talk about their different the different product profiles that they have they also have some upcoming new products this one the RQI actually seems pretty cool if I may say so and the EUB01 which seems to be more of like a electric bicycle type thing also seems pretty cool um, for the uh, for the, those with easy commutes so and this is pretty cool they are doing their sales in omni channel so in different different types of, of, of ways they're selling so they are selling offline through for example for the main way um, which is dealerships and that's domestic and international and in international their biggest market is europe and that to me actually makes plenty of sense i would actually see them more a, a lot for example i'm from el salvador el salvador seems to have a lot of um a lot of scooters and bicycles so places around that area maybe like brazil maybe peru where where the roads get pretty crowded and you need to make sure you just it, it's easier to 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 transport via via scooter or motorcycle i couldn't see the these business this business doing well there um but right now europe is their main international um key market but they also have some form of online online purchase as well and I, I think that's pretty cool they have for example they are in partners with they have integrations with jd.com obviously their main website new store and they also have some tao.com which i'm guessing is also another chinese e-commerce e type business 
Um, that's actually tmall.com, it seems. And if you guys, I, I want to see who actually owns that. If you guys want to see more about about uh, e-commerce, especially in China. And this earnings is for the quarter that ended on March 31st, 2020. I think it was reported sometime in April or if not, um, somewhere in May or June. So this is their most recent earnings. Next, I wanna talk about their financial highlights for this quarter. And one thing we can see is for this quarter, they are down in revenue about 39%. And this 39% sales volume is, like I said, a huge portion is because of COVID-19. Uh, obviously, people are not out there buying buying it. So the overall e-scooter sales reps volume is down 39%. It was down 44% in China for this quarter compared to the same time last year. But if we take a look overseas, it was actually up 6%. And overseas, that, that is everything outside of China. One thing that is pretty cool, though, they, they are increasing the amount of revenue per, per scooter compared to the same time last year. And one of the major reasons that allowed them to increase their revenue growth is just because they have, uh, with, more, with more scooters out there, they are increasing their sales in accessories, spare parts, and services. And that's driving that average average, average revenue per scooter. And the other thing I want to mention is their overall gross margins as a percentage of revenue has also increased. Right now, it's about 23.6% compared to the same time last year being 21.3%. And the final thing I want to take a look from, from their presentation is how that revenue breakdown is at the moment. So just a year ago, total revenue was about 81.2% in China. The other 18.8% was in overseas. For this most recent quarter, we did see a huge decline in China and we saw increase overseas. But right now, 71% comes from China and 29% comes from overseas. So again, it, it might have been just the overall COVID-19, the overall COVID-19 pandemic that happened in China really slowed that down. But it's good to see that China's overview breakdown is becoming less important and overseas is starting to grow. That's what you want to see, right? You don't want one specific country to be such a huge portion of your revenue. All right. And the, um, next, I want to take a look at their balance sheet. And right here, this is in Remembees. RMB, which is the Chinese Chinese yuan, I, I I might be mispronouncing that. But right now they have quick cash of about 700, 724 million of that currency, and that's compared to about 190 million in in short term debt. They don't seem to have any long term debt. So to me, this is a strong balance sheet which has plenty of cash to pretty much pay off its total debt and still have plenty of cash left over. For the remaining of the second quarter of 2020, they do expect revenue to um, increase about 10 to 23 percent year over year. And that to me is actually pretty impressive. And it's going with that. Uh, again, who knows how much COVID-19 has affected, especially with this second wave or just the second half of this first wave, however you guys want to describe it, um, how this is going to affect it. But remember, I, like I said, this can actually add a lot of noise to this business, to this stock, to their stock price. Um, but again, this is definitely a business I wouldn't mind entering if I had the cash in. So now let's take a look at valuation. First thing is, even though this is a growth company, they are already expected to make money this next year. In December 2021, they actually have a forward P.E. ratio of 23.37, which I think is actually fairly cheap for a business that is growing at close to 40 percent for what was it 60 percent for the next three to five years that 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 to me is, is pretty insane and, and i can see why this company has continued to go up in stock price um the forward price to sales ratio for december 2021 is 2.28 and it seems like it's growing at, at revenue is like i mentioned this is a very very strong grower all right, the next company we're gonna take a look at is Yest. And like always, first, let's start off by taking a look at price performance, stock price performance. And I like doing February 20th because I mentioned that's when pretty much the market started tanking. Since then, Yest has gone up 5.7% close to 6%. And like I said, this is still a small cap. It has this market cap of about $2.2 billion, close to 2.04. Um, right now sitting at $17.33. And like I said, ticker is Y-E-X-T 
for those listening to the podcast. Um, so first, let's try to understand what yes is. What what does yes do, and why I'm kind I'm, I'm bullish in this market. Um, so yes is pretty much a a way for companies to make sure that the answer the questions that customers ask online are are answered with a true accurate answer. So let's say back then you might be like, where is my nearest Best Buy, for example, and Google. Google probably at the moment would just give you a list of all the best buys around the area, but it wouldn't give you the true answer, which is list all, all the, all the, comp, all the best buys around with yes. Yes. is an integration to all these, all these search engines to all these um, search platforms from Alexa to Google to Bing. And now when you ask a specific question, um, the the if if that business is working with yes for example if best buy was working with yes and you google where is the closest best buy it gives you the closest best the it gives you an accurate answer and this is you might be like wow well, what is the point of that and case studies has shown that when customers get a, a more definitive answer with their true definitive question um, it does seem like us when we Google now, we ask more specific questions compared to what we probably would have Googled back then. Maybe back then, Best Buys, Best Buy locations is what would we have Googled. But now we are, like I said, we would probably most likely put where is the closest Best Buy. So our questions have become more specific. So we need to have answers that match those. Um, and that's what Yes does. And they work with a lot of great, great teamworks. For example, Ben and Jerry's, Taco Bell. Um, they even work with automobiles. So they have a huge, huge list of, of customers. And like I said, that is such a simple, a simple business to understand. They just want to make sure that the customer's journey starts with a question and the delivery is official answer straight from the source. So for example, let's say I was Best Buy and I work with Yes, I would most likely get my most my most asked questions on Google or Bing, on Alexa, on Insta on Instagram, on Facebook, on wherever. And then just they would go in and make sure to plug in the, the best the best answers or use Google Maps or any form of other APIs to make sure the proper answer is 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 given for that specific question. And like I said, the best way to ever, ever find anything about what the business does is to just go, just go and, and do there and go to their website. For example, answer questions on your website. Um, for example, if you have a website and you want to add and you want to have specific and you want to use yes, you can too. So for example, let's say you are delivery and you put Saturday delivery hours. It gives you those correct, um, those correct answers. And people might believe, hey, I, I didn't know there's a business that actually does this. I thought this is something that magically happens. Remember, nothing in this world magically happens. If even something as, as crazy as this, where, where one doesn't even think, how, how does it happen? Yes, makes it happen. All right, and so now that we understand what they do, let's do how we similar did with Neo and take a look at their growth. First, let's take a look at annual revenue growth. For, for the next three to five years, Yes is expected to grow 18% on average per year compared to the industry going 12.5% and the market going 9.3%. So this is definitely growing, uh, uh, growing stronger than the industry and the market. Unfortunately, forecast annual earnings growth is not in the same page. Forecasted annual earnings growth is about 1%, where the industry is growing at 17.4%, and the market is expected to grow 22.7% on average throughout the next three, on annual for the next three to five years. Uh, so, so that to me is definitely a red flag. Um, but with that strong revenue growth and just the overall market, I do believe information is, is a market that is very bullish and one that many people don't really keep an eye on because they just expect that, that data information to be there. Um, but it, uh, someone needs to, to make sure it's there and that's what yes is for. Now let's take a look at their ownership. Right now, 11.8% of the business is owned by individual insiders. Uh, again, that's actually still a very big portion. When we take a look at all these big guys, um, there's not most of the time you see probably less than one percent ownership by individual insiders. So 11.8 is pretty is still pretty bullish in my mind. And some of the top um, top 
owners are Howard Lehman, who is the CEO and is the co-founder, and Brian Disselberg, who is a member of the director of boards and co-founder. Both of them actually make up a little bit over 6% of ownership, and they are still co-founders. To me, again, that, that alone is another bullish flag. Now let's take a look at their at the revenue growth. In 2019, it grew 30% year to year. In 2018, it grew 34% year to year. And in 2017, it grew 37% year to year. So we can see it is expected to grow very strong throughout the next three to five years. And it has shown strong growth in the in the past. So that, that to me gives a good track record. Now if we take a look at their balance sheet. Very, very strong as well. This is their most recent quarters, which ended March 31st. They have about $250 million in cash and cash equivalents. And they only have a hundred they only have about 123 million of non-current debt and about 9 million of current debt. So close to 130 million uh, of debt in total. So even if this company uses all its cash to, to pay off its total debt, it still has about a hundred over a hundred million dollars, which to me is pretty impressive. Another thing I want to take a look at is deferred revenue is a huge portion of this company's liability, which means most of this company's revenue is through some form of reoccurring, reoccurring type revenue where they get where it's more of a subscription base. Um, and that to me is pretty important, right? Because if Taco Bell, if all these customers pay them on the subscription base, um, they don't really have to continue to work to get more customers, right? Um, to keep that customer, as long as they're delivering the right product um, still and, and they are improving on that product, um, the chances of those customers leaving are, are, are pretty low in, in my opinion. All right, so for this most recent quarter, they reported earnings on June 5th. So just about a little over a month, ago, a little less than a month ago. The first thing they mentioned is customer count increased 36% year over year. Um, one thing is they did, they are withdrawing their, they are withdrawing their, uh, their guidance for, for the physical year of 2021 because of everything due to COVID-19. Um, and another thing I want to mention is they did see revenue growth this quarter beat by 20 um, is up 24% year over year. So we can see that revenue growth is still is still developing even during the whole pandemic um, time that this that this quarter was, was in place of. The other things I want to mention are just some cool cool calibra calibrations or some cool customers that they they grabbed this quarter. The first ones. Um, they did um, are, are colla collaborating with the state of New Jersey and Alabama to launch a comprehensive information hub powered by Yes Answers that centralizes accurate information and updates about COVID-19 and the pandemic. And just to have that kind of experience or that kind of that kind of, of thing in your resume that, hey, I've helped out during the COVID-19 pandemic. Look how efficient this was. I think it's such a great thing to have in your resume. They also worked with the United States Department of State to have travel alerts and advisory information hub, again, powered by Yes Answers. And for example, another big one is the WHO, um, WHO the World Health Organization, also partnered up with Yes. And there were some other big, game, big names. I think they did they partner uh, partnership with Adobe as well. Um, and they also offered new site search product, Yes Answers, and they did they did develop a whole new new products this recent quarter. Again, this this business is one that, in my opinion, it's pretty boring and one that many people don't think even existed. But remember, something like this is needed to 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 start, and it's needed in the overall information world. Now, if we take a look at valuation, this business is not expected to make any money anytime soon. Even on January 22 of 2022, this company is still expected to be negative forward PE ratio. The forward price to sales ratio for this is 4.71. But I do believe as they continue to grow their their they continue to grow their their customers, that growth is eventually is eventually gonna outperform that earnings per share, and that's why I I, I am a holder of yes. Um, so that's it. That's it for today's episode. Like I mentioned, both of these are guys with strong growth in revenue and with strong growth in their with strong balance sheets. Neil is is seeing better growth in in earnings and and being positive growth pretty quickly. Or yes, it's not there at the moment. 
Um, so both of them are, are, are companies I like. So I hope you guys enjoy. Like always, make sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up and the bell. It helps the small channel out so much. And I truly, truly appreciate it. Also, remember to check out my website if you guys want to be part of the newsletter. And that's JoseNaharo.com. Take care, guys, and have a good night.